Okay, in this video we're going to use this uh, Tektronix real-time spectrum analyzer. Take a quick look at the characteristics of this uh, very sophisticated uh, Hot Wheels radar gun. Believe it or not, I got this thing at Toys R Us. And uh, it's actually a 10.5 GHz Pulse Doppler radar. Uh, used for the little toy cars, but we can actually go take a look at uh, what this thing is doing with this real-time spectrum analyzer. So let me kind of focus the camera here on the, uh, on the display a little bit. And uh, maybe a little bit better there. Right about there would be good. So what the display we're looking at right here is something called, uh, this analyzer we call DPX, or Digital Phosphor Spectrum Processing. And the, the graphic that you're looking at here, it's just a spectrum analyzer display. The vertical axis here is amplitude uh, versus frequency. I'm centered at a frequency of 10.52 gigahertz, which is about where the center of this uh, radar gun is. And uh, the color graded bitmap that we see here is the result of almost 300,000 discrete Fourier transforms a second. Since the, since the display can't be updated 300,000 times a second, the, each of those spectrum snapshots that's taken you know, 300,000 times a second is uh, you know, captured, put into a statistical database, and then about 30 times a second we look through that database and assign a color to how often each area is occupied. Think of this as a bunch of traces all laid on top of each other and the density is mapped into color. In this case the hottest colors like the red and the yellow are areas that are occupied most often so I can see the noise floor is basically centered around here. So we get down to the cooler colors like the, you know, the green, the light blue, the dark blue, those are areas that are occupied less and less often. So that's how you read this display. What it gives you is a very high probability of intercept of seeing brief, infrequent, transient dynamically changing RF signals in a very live way. And that's one of the reasons why this is called a real-time spectrum analyzer. So if we take our, our radar gun here, uh, I've got the analyzer set up here with an antenna. If I go and pull the trigger of the radar gun at the antenna here, you can actually see the live spectrum of that signal. So I can see a couple of things. If I bang on the radar gun, you can literally see the transient effects of, uh, you know, just me creating a, uh, you know, a, a microphonic effect inside the oscillator. If I move the gun around, you can kind of see that going around here. You also see some interesting, you know, artifacts here. Um, it looks like there's two little spectral lines, you know, here and here and here. We're going to take a look at why that is. We'll also notice that if, I, if I let go and I, as I pull the trigger, you'll notice that, that instantaneously the very first pulses are going to come up at slightly higher in frequency. You can kind of see that kind of lighting up in blue, and then it kind of settles out. You know, kind of at the center frequent, just a little bit left, you know, just a little bit to the left. So it's telling me is that uh, the first pulses that are being generated are slightly higher in carrier frequency, maybe a, you know, a, a half a megahertz or so, and then they, the, within a couple of pulses, they settle out. So there's a lot of different effects going on with this thing. You know, for, you know, what do you want for a couple of dollar uh, radar gun here? But uh, kind of interesting. So we can go take a look at all of those effects. Okay. But uh, I said, th let's take a look at some of these things. So with this analyzer, we can capture these signals over time. So I'm just going to go into displays here and add a couple displays, and we'll talk about these. So let's bring up a time overview. Let's start off by looking at that anomaly in the spectrum. Okay, so if I go bring a couple of displays up here, okay, uh, and I'll go capture some pulses into memory, boom. Okay, so now if we look at these displays, what I've got here is this display here is showing me RF amplitude versus time. In fact, if we zoom in on this, we can actually see, you know, there's the actual envelope of the RF pulses. I hope that's showing up on the camera. That uh, we literally can see, you know, powers coming up, going, you know, and staying on for a while and shutting off, and then it's repeating again. So we get these RF pulses over time. Okay. Now it's, we could also do, you know, we can throw markers on here to make measurements and things like that. Uh, I'm going to throw a marker right in here. But now let's take a look at what this display is down here. This display is called a spectrogram. This is looking at um, essentially the, the x-axis here is the same as the spectrum analyzer. However, the y-axis here, the vertical axis here, is time. So what this effectively is, is taking this record of data we've captured over time and walking through it doing discrete Fourier transforms. Each of those transforms gives you a spectrum. If you take all those spectrums and you stack them up and you turn that stack up vertically, so the vertical axis is time, what we're looking at is essentially at the top of a number of spectrum traces all laid on top of each other here. We can zoom in on those, for example, okay, 
and let's uh, go pick a zoom and uh, I'm gonna go zoom in vertically here okay and if I zoom in on that and I can pan this down here a little bit uh, let's bring this down so here's for example this the spectrum and how the spectrum changes of one pulse so I can see the marker is sitting on a pulse up here and I can see the marker sitting in the middle of this pulse here and I can basically yank that spectrum out and that's what this red spectrum trace is right here if I take and drag that marker through this in time what we can actually see is that when the spectrum comes up okay when the signal is coming up here we can actually see that there's a bit more energy down at the lower frequency side of things when this pulse is coming up when it's rising and then it kind of settles out for a CW and then as it falls it falls at a little more symmetrically we can see a little bit more symmetrical spectrum going on here so notice the difference between the spectrum at the end of the pulse versus the beginning of the pulse where here all the energy is skewed to one side okay and not much on the other side here but then at the tailing edge of the pulse we see kind of more of an even distribution of, of spectrum effectively on either side of uh, on that on either side of the center so so we can see that effect and that's kind of what we saw when we looked at it in the DPX spectrum right we see those two spe separate lines so what we're literally seeing is the composite result of the instantaneous spectrum of the signal over time and we can actually see that effect here and now we can actually see why when we look at it in the spectrogram okay so another way to look at this let's uh, play with a couple more displays here I'm going to get rid of the spectrogram and the spectrum display let's add an amplitude and a frequency versus time display up here okay I'm going to capture another set of pulses boom into memory here okay so now if we look at these this is again this is my amplitude versus time this is very similar to what we looked at on the time overview window here um, but this one here down, down this plot down here is frequency versus time think of it as frequency deviation versus time now what it's doing is trying to look at carrier frequency of the RF signal so when the signals not there you know like an instance is here you know where there's no pulse then I get a big blast of noise it's kinda of like tuning your FM receiver to a spot where there's no frequency or no signal going on okay but when the carrier is actually there we can actually see what the carrier is doing and here we can literally see that of that effect in fact let me maximize this display we, if you look carefully here we can see carrier frequency here 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 it's dropping from that first pulse and moving our way on so we saw that in the DPX display right we saw that the first pulses were slightly higher in frequency and then they're dropping down as we go forward okay so we can actually see that effect right in here Okay. If we zoom in on this, for example, let's, uh, let's, let's pick a, a, a pulse to go zoom in on here. Let's grab one here and just go zoom in horizontally. Okay, and let me go pan that uh, up a little bit here. Now this is, again, carrier frequency or carrier frequency deviation versus time. And what we can see is that there's a little bit of chirp on that signal as it's coming up. In fact, let's uh, kind of put this back into perspective with the other pulses here. So now if we look at these two displays are kind of paired up in time. This is my RF amplitude versus time. I can actually see the pulses coming up, going down, coming back. This is carrier frequency versus time. So if we grab this marker, for example, and move him over, we can actually see that while at this point in time, the marker is sitting right there, I've reached full amplitude here, but I can see that my carrier frequency is, is down quite a bit compared to where it settles out okay and as I advance that marker through time okay I can actually see that I've got to get about a third of the way through the pulse in time before I kind of settle out in frequency okay so that again also explains what we were seeing in the live spectrum I got a little bit of unintended chirp in that waveform and uh, it's very easy to pick out with, uh, with uh, this analyzer we can go a little bit further uh, this analyzer features some uh, uh, pulse measurement capability that can automate some of the measurements here. We can see from this display that I captured uh, many, many pulses into memory here. Uh, let me just silence my phone here. There we go. And uh, so I've captured many pulses here into memory. Okay. And uh, so I can actually go through and analyze those in greater detail. So let's go and I'm going to close. Uh, say the amplitude versus time, the DPX, and even the frequency versus time. And I'll go into the pulsed RF measurements and bring up those displays. Okay. And uh, by doing that, I can go, uh, let's go and capture some more of these into memory. Boom. Okay. Maybe I'll do it a couple times here. Okay. I'll grab another one there. Okay. I'm going to hit stop here so we don't go analyze anymore. 
And uh, what we're going to do is just go and uh, make a couple of observations here. So for example, this, this uh, display up here is called a pulse table. And you kind of see it looks like a spreadsheet. Okay. In fact, if I maximize this, it might be easier to see. Um, what we have is essentially a row for every one of the pulses that we've captured. I've got a column for all the measurements we can make. There are 26, 27 different parameters we can make on these, uh, on these pulses. Things like average power, uh, uh, peak power, uh, pulse width, rise time, fall time, repetition interval, repetition rate, duty cycle, duty factor, um, you know, ripple, droop, overshoot, and even more complex things like pulse-to-pulse -pulse frequency difference, pulse-to-pulse -pulse phase difference, frequency and phase error, you know, frequency and phase deviation within the pulses, lots of detailed characterization we can make, and we get numeric results for every one of these pulses. This can be done for up to 10,000 pulses with this suite. Now what's nice is, let's say for example, I want to look at the pulse width of pulse number 5. I can pick pulse number 5 and click on pulse width right there, and now this measurement down here, this pulse trace window down here, is showing me that that particular measurement. In this case, it's a 20 microsecond wide pulse. I can walk through the different pulses here, and you can see walking through the table you know, as I walk up and down, I can actually see the measured result for every one of these pulses. Okay. Now what's also interesting is this plot up here. Okay, this one we call a pulse statistics plot. This one will show me essentially this whole column of pulse width data versus pulse number. So it's pulse width versus pulse number down here. And you see, I can see the little red carrot here. As I move through the different pulses, I can actually see where that is in that trend. Okay. So uh, what's interesting is if we take a look at, say, uh, instead of the pulse width, let's go look at uh, frequency difference. Okay. Let's go grab another acquisition here so I get a nice clean one from when this thing is kind of uh, starting off here. Okay. Now with this, I can actually see that frequency difference that we talked about. Um, you can actually see the carrier frequency coming up from some high level and then working its way down and ultimately settling out you know, and uh, seeing that trend over time. So that trend that we saw just by looking at the frequency versus time plot, I can actually measure that here now. Okay. So let's go back, for example, and look at, you know, let's go back and look at pulse width again, for example. So I can see there's kind of, you know, just a, the pulse width doesn't have any real consistency to it. Uh, and I can look at other parameters like average transmit power, rise time, fall time. You know, I can look at all those on a pulse by pulse basis as well as in the trend. Now also this trend can also be used to show a histogram to see how a particular parameter has got, is distributed. Um, whether it's got some normal distribution to it or it's skewed one way or the other. We also can have this do what's called a time trend. Now if the repetition interval repetition interval from pulse to pulse was not constant, there was some stagger to it, then the shape of this would make more sense with respect to time, okay, as opposed to plotting that versus pulse number, which is what I'm doing right there. Okay. Now what's also really interesting is we can also take this whole trend, okay, of any of these measurements that we can show here and do a Fourier transform on that. And if we do an FFT on that, what that shows me is if there's any periodic or deterministic variation of any of those parameters over time. And you'll notice I've got a little marker kind of set up right here, right about three kilohertz. And what that's telling me is that for this particular measurement, pulse width, I've got a, a variation in the measured pulse width occurring at about a three kilohertz rate. And I found that for a number of these parameters, like rise time, Okay, you can see it there. Uh, fall time, pulse, a repetition interval, repetition rate, duty factor. A lot of these measurements, ripple not really so much, but a lot of these measurements have a peak right around three kilohertz. So what that's telling me is that this particular radar gun probably has a three kilohertz oscillator in it. Maybe the thing that's multiplexing the LCD on the back that is actually getting into and disturbing the pulse generation characteristics of this radar. Now, in real systems, you might look for a power supply ripple or, you know, switching noise or clock noise getting into, you know, a system and maybe affecting the pulse generation. But you have all that kind of capability, you know, right in here, uh, built into the instrument without having to go and analyze this stuff in MATLAB or something like that. So there's other advanced features, too, if you're dealing with, uh, with chirped waveforms, linear frequency modulated pulses. 
Uh, this analyzer can look at the time side lobe or impulse response of that to look for reflection problems or other uh, other issues and things like that with respect to uh, to chirp pulses. We can essentially de-chirp those pulses and get down to the impulse response. So lots of really powerful tools, but uh, this radar gun is actually pretty cool. It's pretty interesting to see that uh, you know, a toy that I bought for eight bucks on clearance at Toys R Us has got some pretty interesting characteristics at uh, at 10 gigahertz. So I hope you enjoyed and learned a little something. Thanks.